It's uh, Tony Monaco live on Z035 here. Happy Friday, everybody. And we have a special guest in the studio today, Rev. What's going on, Tony? We are ready to rev things up here for uh, your weekend, and uh, we're so excited to have you back in the studio. Um, you dropped by uh, back in uh, June, and we had a little conversation off air, but we didn't do an official on air conversation. So we got to do that today, right? Excited to do it. It's a special day for you. It really is. Brand it's... Spanking You album drops today. It's out right now. It is. I, it's just so surreal. I mean, mm -hmm. you spend three years. Right. Right. I've been working on this project for three years. Yeah, because we talked about it a little bit uh, back in June, and then you were, you know, putting those songs together. But three-year project. I mean, uh, you've dedicated and devoted so much of your time and life to this. Um, it's got to be pretty special for you to finally see it come to fruition today. So so special. I mean, I think that I probably wrote over a hundred songs for this project. Wow! And narrowed it down to how many? How many songs on the album? Thirteen tracks. Thirteen tracks, and it's called uh, Saturn Return. Saturn Return. Are, are you uh, like into astrology and the stars and the sun and all that? Kind Kind of stuff. I am, yeah. but my mom is more so. So okay. I grew up being in an astrological loving household. Okay. I mean, she will to mm -hmm. this day not allow me to sign contracts on days where the planets are so out of whack. So wow, so everything's got to be aligned for you. Exactly. And the stars have all aligned because the album has dropped today and your fans get to check it out finally. Exactly. Uh, we've been playing your stuff here on 035 and supporting you from uh, Control Alt Delete, which won a Juno for you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Tell me about uh, being at the uh, Juno Awards back in uh, March in Edmonton. It is still the most surreal experience of my life. Right. We're, we're I'm almost a year um, past that at yeah. this point, and it still hasn't sunk in. It was just so magical. You were there with your musical brothers, with Banks and Ranks and Pablo, right? Yeah. Preston Pablo. It was so nice to just be able to do it with them. They're truly, truly like family yeah. to me. Um, not only uh, just being nominated and being able to perform mm -hmm. with them. Like, I remember when we started at Preston's project at the same time as mine. Right. You know, in the same writing camps with the same producers and just us like taking breaks at studio and having these like big dreams and then finally being able to like have this moment together right. with Banks and Ranks at the Junos, Canada's biggest night in music. Mm -hmm. Were you a big fan, like, you know, watching the Junos growing up? Oh, yeah. Always watch the different award shows, especially, you know, the Juno Awards being the Canadian Music Showcase, right? Of course. Yeah. yeah. What was the coolest thing that happened to you that night? A lot of uh, crazy things were happening that night, including a, a protester. Somebody got naked that night, I remember, when Avril Lavigne was on the stage. But anything crazy happened to you that night or just a, a cool experience? It was just cool. Yeah. It was just awesome. There was so much love in the room. Right. Just, you know, honoring Canadian talent, I mean, just to see, like, how many, you know, global superstars are from Canada it made mm -hmm. me really proud to be Canadian. And Was there anybody that uh, you were starstruck or in awe of when you saw... I think Avril Lavigne because I grew yeah. up. I grew up listening to her mm -hmm. first album in my closet with the lights off, wow. with, with my disc man on. Mm -hmm. So seeing her in person was just so surreal. It was just a very cool, very cool moment. I wanted to tell her, but I kind of geeked out. Ah, okay. Well, one day that'll come probably, yeah, right? Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, tell me about uh, Contemporary Love. You know, I mean, a great song. Uh, contemporary title, but uh, I love that it has like an old school disco, almost like a freestyleish kind of sound to it in parts of it. Absolutely. So the freestyle part in the song which is in the pre-chorus was yeah. actually inspired by one of my favorite tracks of all time which is touch me in the morning by marlena shaw nice and so i just thought that the there was something about the intro of that song that was so intimate and so captivating and i was like damn if i could ever put that in a song one day or something like that i, I would be killing it i would check something off my list and so finally with contemporary love i was like oh i want to try that thing and when i spliced it into the record it really worked but the song itself, of course, it's very, you know, heavily influenced by disco. Right, yeah. I spent a lot of time in a wedding band doing a lot of disco sets. Love disco. Yeah. Amazing. Love disco. Who doesn't yeah. love disco? As a matter of um, fact, I'm doing a fundraiser tonight. It's uh, Hats On for Awareness uh, in support of mental health. And we have a Montreal band that is uh, performing for us. Who's the band? Uh, the Montreal Rhapsody Orchestra. Oh, they're incredible. Yeah. They're incredible. That's good to hear. That's great news. Yeah. So looking forward to seeing them. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that you were influenced by that sound. And so, it's so cool because people are into that nostalgia kick. There's so much craziness that's going on in the world right now. And I think people just need to feel good. And when they hear those types of sounds and beats, it just makes them feel good. I agree. And, you know, this the record feels very classic because, you know, it's it's very referential. Right. Um. But the subject matter is mm. really about, you know, being a hopeless romantic in the modern dating world. So Fighting it's kind love, of that, yeah. that duality between the old and the new. So, right. Yeah. Like I, using social media or people oh, going on Tinder and yeah, Bumble to find love and search for the love of their life, right? So things have kind of changed, right? It's the apps. It's yeah. the death of the chase, so yes. to speak, okay. in many ways. Yeah. But we adapt and we, you know, we find love. Is that can. your favorite uh, song on the album? Contemporary Love? Yeah. 
I, that's like asking me to pick my favorite child. <laughs> Come on now. So how many childs do you have? You have 13 I children? Have 13 children. 13 children on the album, and you love them all dearly. I've been busy the last yeah. few years. We'll know? let the, uh, the audience pick out what their favorite is, right? Sounds like a plan. So it's available. Stream it. Go get it today. It's called uh, Saturn Return. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of crazy things that have been happening on, on stages. You know, we've seen uh, Drake, you know, where people were throwing uh, objects of him and he flipped that around and turned that around and now has uh, people uh, throwing bras at him as he encouraged them to throw bras instead of objects and cell phones like, you know, that happened to BB Rexa. Uh, your experience on stage, have you had anything like that happen to you or has it been a good, safe environment when Rev performs live on stage? I would say for the most part, I've been lucky. Yeah. I did have one experience this year where somebody threw like a hard object on stage. Right. It's like, like I sometimes see- fans get like overzealous, right? Like they, they do it with maybe a good intention. Um, it's never a good intention when you're throwing something, right? Right. And um, I want to believe that it's just to be goofy and funny yeah. and that they don't know. Yeah. Over. Like the one guy with uh, BB Rexa, like he threw the, the phone on stage thinking that, okay, she's going to grab the phone and take a selfie and yeah. he's going to have that. You know, on his phone, but it's like, no, why are we doing stuff it's like awful. this, right? And she was really hurt by that. She had to yeah. get stitches. It was awful. But yeah, mm-hmm. somebody threw something on stage and I actually stopped the show. Yeah. So that's got to stop. Right? Yeah. Just a warning out there to everybody. If you go to the show, it's all about the artists. And, and you're going to see a lot of different artists, maybe um, when people are attending uh, festivals. And maybe that might not be your favorite artist out there, but to have them show some respect um, to when the point gets to when you see your artist up there, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you were in uh, Kelowna, BC on the weekend. I was. So is this a wrap up? of the tour you're not doing any more shows for the rest of the year or are there going to be some random shows that was the end of our festival run. right the festival season the festival season came to a close over the weekend it was actually a rescheduled show because of course you know Kelowna was struck with horrible tragedy with right. the fires yeah. and so they rescheduled the show and what a beautiful and resilient community yeah it was it's just like it's such a beautiful place the people are so wonderful and it was a heck of a way yeah. to end the festival season. Yeah. So what's uh, up for you now? Are you going to put together a tour for 2024? Just do a couple of uh, random shows, concentrate on writing some new music as the new album comes out today? Well, yes. Yeah. So yeah. today we actually get to announce that I am going on tour All right. at the top of next year. Breaking news here on Z1035. Rev going on tour. Is this a solo tour? It. Uh, well, we're... Okay, you can't give me too much. You already give me a lot here today. I am, I yeah. am. You're the first actually to hear. Nice, okay, so, very cool. It's an exclusive. So we look forward to details, and uh, we'll have them for everybody on uh, Z135. Um, the album Saturn Return. So tell me more about that and and the name. So Saturn Return. So I'll I'll give you a background on the Sonics afterwards. But okay. The title Saturn Return. We spoke about astrology earlier. Right. Yeah. And Saturn Return is an astrological event that usually occurs in everybody's life around you know 27 to 30. Kind of like a coming of age type thing. Yeah. Yeah, you could say that uh, right. like technically all mm-hmm. of the planets return to the exact point in the sky as right. when you were born but they say that this pe- this is a period in your life where you learn a lot of hard lessons mm-hmm. and you really come into who you're meant to be and sometimes that's fun and sometimes it's challenging but you learn do you, a little- do you feel like you've come into your own now Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this album played a huge part in that. And so as I was developing it and, you know, I was chatting with my mom, who's very into astrology. She's like, I think that you're going through your Saturn return. I was like, that is a great album title. Yeah. Because this, you know, this album really watched me grow up. I don't think that I've grown up, of course, physically grown up, you know, Mm. we all age. Yeah. But I don't think that I've really learned more formative lessons in such a short period of time than in the last three years because writing an al- album is so introspective. Like right. it, it really forces you to dig deep. And so this album is really a sneak peek into my diary um, as told through song and dance. Did mm-hmm. you write most of your stuff? Uh, you were living here in Toronto for a bit and then, yeah, I mean, you grew up in uh, Montreal. Are you back living in Toronto now or Montreal? I've been in Toronto for the last three years. Right, I'm, so you continue to live here and a lot of the stuff maybe was inspired here in Toronto or, you know, road trips and stuff? I would say I, I create a lot of Montreal and I said yeah. that Saturn Return is a love letter to Montreal okay. and to dance music as right. well. Yeah. But I do create in Toronto, but, you know, my frequent collaborators, Banks and Ranks, they're in yeah. Montreal, so I go home often. And it's always nice. Very cool. Well, we appreciate uh, you stopping by uh, the radio station here today and chatting with us here on Z135. And we wish you all the success. And we can't wait to see you live yeah. in 2024, Rev. And we'll have the breaking news for you right here on Z135. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.